I kind of just wanted to uh, tell the Majority Report audience a little bit about um, the documentary I'm, I'm making on Michael's life and work. Um, and basically, I think, you know, some people watching have probably followed this, but one of the things I kind of like delved back into was like Michael as like a, a little kid. And at a really young age, like age eight, he called into a local talk show and he gave like a prediction about the 1992 Democratic primary. And this was at a point when like no one thought Bill Clinton was going to win this um, primary. And Michael um, obviously was a Jerry Brown, you know, supporter. Um, but anyhow, he calls into the show. He gives an alias. So it's a little confusing, but I would love to play uh, the clip of that tape if we have it up. All right. Great. And wait, when, when when did he actually make the call? I think it was like, I mean, I think it was 92. Is that it would right? Have been, it, it would have been in 92. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious at like at what point in that, because I remember that primary. Well, I guess it's like so. whenever the New York primary was coming up. I had oh, okay. We could Google it. Number, hello, you're on WNNZ. Hello, uh, this is uh, Stephen from Ashfield. And I just got it, I think... Clinton's going to win New York by a squeak. You know, I, I, I happen to agree with your analysis there. I think that, that Clinton has pulled some rabbits out of the hat in recent days. His appearance on the Phil Donahue show the other day was a brilliant performance where Donahue kept trying to ask him about, you know, whether he inhaled his marijuana and had an affair. <laughs> and finally, the audience booed Donahue and said, look, we want to hear about education and Medicaid and how you're going to fix the economy. We don't want to hear about this junk anymore. But what do you base your analysis on, sir? Well, I, I was hoping that Brown, I'm hoping that Brown wins it. I just think that it's kind of like Clinton's an idiot. But and uh, most of the people in New York, you know, are kind of funked up but so if he's going to go in new york you know he's going to get voted for you know you've been really been following this race what's your first name uh uh my steven steven and, and are you in school <laughs> Very steven convincing uh same time got better no i'm homeschooled you're homeschooled how old are you oh i'm i'm great it's going great how old are you I'm uh, eight years old. You're eight years old, you're homeschooled, and you can discuss the presidential race more intelligently than more adults. Well, I'd say that's a good argument for homeschooling. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm really glad to uh, to hear from you, Stephen, and uh, you keep it up, and, and give me a call next week, and, and we'll see how good your prediction came. Okay, bye. Okay, thanks for your call. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it was that really fun awesome. to discover that because, you know, essentially there's like so much of Michael's work kind of like strewn across the Internet. But there's like no like cohesive, like one place you can kind of go. And a lot of people post his passing have gotten really interested in kind of trying to like learn more. And we're doing this thing where we re-air the old episodes every week. Um, and you can see that on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. We're up to episode 59 next Tuesday. Um, but the idea behind the documentary is just to kind of have this like one place where you can kind of see like the, you know, evolution arc of Michael's work. And um, do you have a sense? I mean, it's really just going to go as it goes, right? Yeah, I mean, we've started interviews. We did um, kind of like step one was I did this uh, podcast, like mini podcast, which is on the Patreon um, patreon.com slash tmbs and it was called the brief wondrous life of michael brooks it's not like done but a lot of episodes have been recorded and the idea was to kind of like get a, a head start on like how many different you know people michael kind of like worked with or, or developed his kind of analysis and and worldview like as collaborators sam came on um hopefully matt and david and emma will come on as well um and so like that was kind of like the bulk of pre-production and i've just started in person interviews i had two of his really good friends from um he did one year at bennington college um so that was like obviously a pretty interesting time in his life um, michael did yeah he did one year at bennington him and him and donna tart um have that i don't know if i knew that 
Yeah. He he basically didn't have a call like spoilers for the documentary. Um, he didn't have like a really good uh, call, high school transcript because he was kind of like homeschooled and he, he didn't have like the right. Um, so he kind of had this idea that if he went to Bennington, they didn't care about grades at all. He could then transfer to a more academic college. And that's exactly he kept what that did. on the DL. I don't think. he. I don't, told yeah, me. I don't think it was something he it was not like a, a ha- the happiest time, but. Um, it definitely was comedically fruitful. And I think, you know, Bennington's been described as like the school for like the dumb and rich and Michael was not dumb and rich um, to quote his friend, Keith Hendershot. Um, and so I feel like that might've really cemented some of his like worldviews. And like, I, I just feel like that experience was, I don't know, impactful, but not necessarily happy. Right. Wow. Oh, that's interesting. That, that, uh, that tracks. And, and then he, what I think people don't know, too, is that he spent his junior year um, at Bates studying abroad. Was it junior year? I think it was, right? It was. Yeah, it was either junior or sophomore. Um, his friend, Luke Mayville, um, who I think maybe some of you have seen on the Majority Report or TMBS, he's doing a lot of great work in Idaho. He, that's where he met Luke, um, and they studied in Ankara. And um, that, again, was like, I think, another um, pretty significant experience. I mean, it's so funny going back because like talking to people about politics at that time, it's like, you know, being like a liberal for like a lot of college students meant like supporting John Kerry. I mean, Michael did well, you know, people are going to like bur- burn me down online. But Michael did work on the Kerry campaign. Like, it's interesting to go back and see like this. I, I think a lot of people have this notion of his politics in the last three years. And like they grew and they developed and his like thinking grew and developed and his analysis grew and developed. And I think it's kind of important to like put that out there because I feel like the Internet's so punishing towards people. Like if you're not like up to snuff on like how things are now, um, if you ever like, you know, took time to like maybe get to, to where you are now, I feel like it's it's like really frowned upon. Right. <laughs> I mean, I think I, I mean, I think Michael's politics really um began to develop when he started doing his own show i mean i think like probably in the in the year before uh, uh you know where where they really sort of were were most like at his death he started i think probably a year before starting his own show um, yeah and they really started to develop that the the thing i've been discovering is it was like always there and like the lived experience of like growing up in poverty in america just like me like just this indelible mark on like worldview and and i just feel like it kind of took him having his own show to like really have this confident platform where that was just a hundred percent like he was the guiding force of the political avenue i think it was always there just the like i don't know packaging and clarity grew yeah, and I think also, uh, in some respects, the the language of the day sort of totally, you know, uh, th- that's I mean that's how people's politics are formed, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you have these sort of um, uh, 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 thoughts or ideas that are floating around in you, and it's not until it intersects with either um, and, and, and experiences, not until it intersects with new stuff that you read and new people that you listen to or, um, you know, new opportunities or, or changes in society that uh, begin to give like, you know, uh, uh, allow for a, a language uh, mm-hmm. to exist. I mean, I, you know, uh, he wasn't his, his politics didn't change. I don't think radically. I think they just developed into what they were developing into. And prior to that, his his focus had been on on uh, foreign policy in many respects. And in fact, when he came on to the show, he had been writing for Talking Points Memo, I think, a little bit. I don't know how much he had done, but a little bit. And he was going to go to the LSD, I feel like. Yeah. And then he just, like, (laughs) at one point I remember going like, Dude, aren't you? What are you? What are you like? Aren't you going to LSE? Like, what are you? What are you still here for? And uh, and he's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm putting it off. Um, and uh, and and th- and I think around then too, he was hosting a show for uh, for Reza Aslan's uh, media, which was a a show of like exclusively about uh, foreign policy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, there, there's like so many different uh, like little chapters in, in Michael's life. And it's been really, um, I don't I don't quite have the language, I guess. I guess being able to like channel my grief into a project like gives me like a lot of purpose. And so I feel really grateful to have that. Um, but um, it's definitely, I don't know, it's like a mix. It, it kind of feels like I'm keeping him alive and it's always exciting to sort of talk to someone new and hear new stories. But um, I feel like the kind of default expression is like, it's been really exciting. It's been really fun. It's like, well, no, not that. But right. it does feel good to to get to continue to, I guess, yeah, it really feels like keeping him alive. Um, so yeah, there's, I'm oh, oh, sorry. No, I, I mean, I, I think that's, you know, um, I think, you know, part of the reason, the, you know, the uh, goal in doing this is to uh, both celebrate his life, but also to like, allow people to uh either get reintroduced to him or get introduced to him for the first time because um particularly you know uh particularly the work that he did on his show uh, you know in those last uh, two or three years has uh i think a lot of resonance going forward um uh for people you know and i'm uh, for me it's it's fun to like look back on the comedy stuff because it's just mm -hmm. sort of like it's it's like watching videos of me of myself going on a, a roller coaster uh, or, you know, some other like, you know, uh, like um, a water slide or something. It's just fun. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, like there's a lot for folks to that is usable and relevant, uh, you know, today and I think tomorrow as well. Yeah, that's kind of been like the purpose of the re-air project, which I do as much for myself as like everyone else, which is it's just a little daunting. There's just so much content. And so if you can kind of like listen every week as you would have if you were currently a fan of TMBS, which a lot of people, like I said earlier, only found out about the show after he had passed, you you are usually like every week I learn something or I'm reminded of something I had previously learned. And like, yes, the humor slaps. It is still... <laughs> So am I allowed to, I can, I can swear on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you can. You yeah. Can. Um, I, no, I don't have to, but it's just so funny. Um, you all, you, 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 Saul is, uh, here in the office. You will owe him a buck, but okay. you can do it. I'll mail in a dollar to and support the postal U S postal service. Um, the, the final clip I brought in, uh, if we want to play it, was from his last live stream, which, again, is kind of something that's sort of had virality and, and gone around the Internet a bunch. But I guess, like, the next chapter of Michael's work, which we'll never really get, it kind of seems like he was sort of starting to articulate on the show towards the end. And, um, you know, Ken Wilber's politics are a little bit questionable, or I think Michael would just say not good, but his like structure of integral theory, which is something that I am not the best at describing and you can can look up, but kind of like weaving multiple kind of different thoughts, different um, quadrants of life into one like way of like analyzing the world. I feel like was something Michael was like starting to sort of come up with his own version of. Um, he was just so kind of focused on creating a set of politics that like truly changed material conditions for people, but also like was accessible and wasn't elitist or exclusionary or like competitive. Um, and I, I feel like on this live stream, I kind of want to should like play these last couple minutes. Cause I feel like what he's talking about is still so, um, you know, true and important. And it's also just like now this live stream is kind of his goodbye. Um, it just, uh, I don't know. It, it's, something I hold very dear. So I just wanted to share those last couple of minutes. And then we start to have this perspective of wanting to have some flexibility in how we look at things and, and, and a deep tolerance, like the tolerance that someone like a Pepe Mojica talks about. Not a kind of, you know, yeah, well, you just got to tolerate everybody. And it's, it's, it's deeper. Cause like also ultimately you do, it's another dynamic. tolerate everything you have battles in politics but you 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 want to understand the engine of different worldviews and in that mix he's including and meta modernism in certain ways points to this and certainly you know jeremy johnson the contemplative work 
And at its best, some connection to a spiritual practice or any type of conscientious cultivation of empathy that we're all trying and we're all failing, that's the point, that also cultivates the self-compassion, is gonna give us some of the capacity to have some of the sort of flexibility of mind and emotions to move in between worldviews, pivot in between them, and start to create some of that synthesis, that sort of real range of empathy and intellect. So I hope this made some sense, guys. I'm using these things to, you know, formulate the stuff that I'm really thinking about for like future books and just stuff that I care about and want to share something that uh, is, is, is important to me. I'm not, you know, I'm not into the whole quackery, whatever. I mean, I, I have plenty, plenty of criticisms of, of Wilbur, but let, let, that's actually exactly what I'm talking about. Even just that, like that you can, that work cannot just be reduced to like the online quack library or whatever. We gotta figure out how to think through things in a much more nuanced way and see human beings, particularly at an individual level, in a much more nuanced way. Acceptance doesn't mean that you're not making distinctions. I'll wrap this up and I will wish each and every one of you all my very best. Please treat yourselves well, treat each other better, treat each other well, uh, treat yourself better. Um, and uh, log off if you can. Much love to all of you. Stay safe, stay strong, be well. Much love, people. That's um, nice. Yeah, I uh, there's a little bit of if you look up the like Michael Brooks final live stream, it's a there's a 15 minute version and there's some like little jump cuts and um, he wasn't censored or edited post mortem. He just plugs his Patreon like. 18 times throughout i was gonna say i was honestly i was like and don't forget the patreon uh that I, I, and so i had to get it down for instagram or, or like so i forgot i was trying to get down for something on social media and i was like trying to find cuts and i was like oh well i just like lift all the patreon shout outs <laughs> got to type 15 um, yeah that's what i would have i would have said to him like, hey, dude, congratulations. You didn't say you talk about your Patreon for almost three minutes. And <laughs> uh, it's funny. Um, but that's a great uh, that's a great message, um, to, you know, to uh, and folks should basically, um, again, take this opportunity, uh, head over to uh, TMBS, uh, the YouTube channel and, uh, you know, uh, work your way backwards or work your way forwards um, and uh, find clips, send them around. There's been a couple of clips that Michael have had, and I think we're going to be playing uh, one or two that have gone viral since his death. Mm -hmm. um, that I mean, in, in a big, big way. And so a lot of this stuff is still, you know, like I say, very, very relevant. Um, and I think he was definitely headed in a place where like that type of clip is, <clears throat> I think, shows the rel you know that's going to be that's ever that's what we call evergreen uh in terms of like me being be meaningful for people regardless of what era we're in totally um yeah i just wanted to also shout out and thank danny at uh body politic media who's been helping me with like clips and editing the re-airs um and yeah thank you to, to everyone in the majority report audience and like across the the online left, whatever that means nowadays, um, for just their, you know, just there's there's a lot of like really caring, thoughtful people um, that I feel like I've met digitally over the last two years that give me optimism about just humans and the world. So thank you guys for all for all your support. Alicia, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate Bye. it. Good to yeah, see good you. Good to all. see you. Yeah. Bye, Matt. Bye, Emma. Bye, Sam.